morning, everyone. I want to say big thank you to Dadaman for, I would say it's an honor. Thank you so much, sir, for honoring us to bring us God's word this morning. And the title of the message this morning is Making a Continuous Progress Through Prayer. Making a continuous progress through prayer. Our Father has dealt with that and almost all the pastors have taught on continuous progress. And I'm trusting God for his help this morning. Because when we are talking about prayer, it's beyond you can you can have the ability, the grace to pray. And it may be difficult for you to teach it. So the fact that someone knows how to pray doesn't mean the person can teach prayer. And the realm of prayer is something that we can't exhaust. I want to challenge God this morning that the area of prayer most of us we are conversant with is prayer of asking and receiving. And if I say, okay, if I say, how many of us believe that, okay, the only reason why we pray is so that I can receive. I believe many hands will go up this morning. And I want to give us a shock at this morning. The prayer is beyond making a request, actually. It's beyond you asking. It's beyond that. It's beyond you asking for a car. In fact, let me shock you. That's not one of the reasons why God laid the principle of prayer. Because when we are talking about greater dimensions, greater dimensions in the spirit, greater dimensions in the spirit, supernatural, asking for material things are the lowest point of the ladder. They are the very lowest point of the ladder. Because the intention of God for our heads for this realm is beyond just you asking for what to wear, you asking for a sandal. Though those are part of it, but they are the lowest keda, lowest step when it comes to principle of prayer. And I'm not saying I know everything about prayer, but out of what God has shown me, I just want to share a few with us. Now, number one, I want us to take note: prayer is a realm of possibilities of which continuous progress is just one of them. Prayer is a vast realm of possibilities. In fact, men, men that know that they don't have anything on the heart, you can actually wire what you don't have. You can wire it down to heart. So, it's a realm of possibilities. Anything if you can pray as long as you can pray, you can expect anything to happen in your life. Number two, there's what we call the force of prayer. It ensures continuous progress. Men of like passion, people like, people like us who have tapped into the dimensions are not willing to return. Because this dimension have made them a science and a wonder among men. When you see some of our fathers, our father in the house, some of our fathers, people that have stood out. In fact, once they entered, they saw, they, 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 they noticed the kind of encounter, the kind of possibility, uh, the prayer dimensions, you know, are for them. They are not willing to come down. Because they have tapped into something that ordinary men don't, don't have. It makes you tap into a dimension that ordinary men, is not possible for ordinary men. And I've said it, I've said it over and over, it's beyond just getting a house. It's beyond just getting material things. It makes everything possible. Everything you can ever think of. Number three. So, let me say this. Whenever you see men doing uncommon and extraordinary things, things that are not common with men, we must recognize that they have tapped into a spiritual, into a spiritual dimensions 
that is not visible on earth. And many of us will agree with me this morning that to pray. And now I want to I, I just want to shift our focus from this dimension of asking and pray and asking and receiving, just a normal one. I want to shift our focus into when it comes to making difference. That's the realm I'm talking of from. When it comes to making difference, let's leave the realm of buying, realm of clothes and all that. But when it comes to tapping into resources, and you will agree with me this morning that resources that make men are not found on the surface. Hmm. Resources that made men is not located on the surface. That's why it seems as if prayer is very, very hard. Because it's like when you are looking for diamond or gold, people that, that do work like that, they go deeper into the, 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 the deepest parts of the heart to look for diamond and gold. So when you want to reach something that is beyond ordinary, not something that is beyond normal, let me say, I, I, I don't want to be selfish and partial and say the only channel is through prayer. When you want to encounter something solid, you want to grab something solid, it's not something people are tired of just being normal. People are tired of listening to normal people. People are tired of just, you know, hearing common testimony. We thank God for those testimonies. But people like me, we are tired. And when you see people that are tired like that, prayer gives them strength to walk where ordinary men are not willing to walk into. And that's what bats something unusual in their lives. When you see people praying for hours, it's not that they, it's not that they don't have any other work or they don't have any other work to do with their hours, with their time. But they don't want to work like ordinary men. So the only way to encounter supernatural to encounter the power of God is to stay in the pray, place of prayer until you tap into resources that is never visible on the earth. And I've said it, resources that made men are not on the earth. You have to, it's through a channel to bring it. Now let me shock you, tabernacle of power is not on the earth. Yeah. Rev has to tap into a realm where tabernacle of power is and bring it here. You will agree with me, it takes more time. I'm telling you, it takes more time. That's why we don't have so many people in prayer, so many people, you know, spending hours in prayer. If I ask you now, now, this also the later part of my message, but I believe I can share it now. Now, many of us, we've agreed, I think I had it, that if you can pray for one hour, you are okay. That at least if you can pray for one hour, you are good. May I submit to us this morning, the kind of challenges confronting our world now, the kind of trouble that you and I are going now, one hour prayer can undo them. I don't know about you, but the kind of trouble me I'm facing, three hours prayer can solve it. And there's this common saying that we say uh, the witches though Apostle Babalola prayed a lot. In fact, is what we are following. Despite the fact that, despite that prayer ministry, that capacity on which God called him into, people are still saying today, you will agree with me, we've read it in many books, people are still saying today, that the witches in the day of Babalola are not the same witches. Despite the fact that Apostle Babalola prayed. In fact, he shook our word. But they said they've migrated. The witches have become more stronger. And now, this is a man that prayed for three days on the mountain and he was just thanking the Lord. And the Osomagbe, the people that followed him to the mountain, they said, Baba has not stopped thanking the Lord. And he was still thanking the Lord for three hours. No, three days at a stretch. He dealt with category of witches and wizards. We, we, we read his book. We had, we had his history. But this is what I'm saying. 
if a man like that, with that level of prayer, could survive those times, with that level, which means we have to surpass him. We must. I'm begging you, beyond the clapping, beyond you enjoying what I'm saying this morning, please tap into the resources that, that men that have tapped into it can never fail. I know it's part of our history as a church. We have met in the past. It is, is, you know, everything is just moving out now. We thank God for that. Things are fizzling out now. We thank God for that. But in the past, we have stories about men of God that are failing and all that. But let me shock you. The reason why our fathers of faith now and men of God are succeeding in our days now is because they, they've tapped into something that can predict their success in the next 50 years. As you are sitting there, can you predict your destiny? Can you predict in the next 20 years that I won't break down? Do you know it's possible? That on a daily basis, you know that the kind of strength you are working with, no, you can't fail. Because you have tapped into a realm that, that forbids failure. You've tapped into a realm that forbids you just dragging on the floor. Now, it's still part of my, later part of my message. But do you know what? In our natural state as man, we are weak. In fact, the earlier you realize that, the better. Men that have stood out in our world today, men that are doing fine, that we see these people coming for today, there is something, there is an understanding they are working with. They knew that human nature, we are so weak. In fact, God deliberately put it that way. So that forever till Jesus comes, we can be depending on him. So if we realize that in our own nature, in our own strength, that we are very, very weak, I'm telling you, the number of hours you are spending in prayer, you will change it. There is still weaknesses in our life because we are not praying enough. The weaknesses. Now, what, you, what I've said is when you tap into those resources, one of the things it happens is that your prayer life has the capacity to swallow up your, your weakness. It will. It has that capacity to swallow your weaknesses. So I'm begging us this morning, including myself, I'm begging myself. Uh, let me say this. God has made ways. Please, let's stop using our weakness. Uh, let's stop saying, you know I'm a man, I'm weak. No, many people have left that realm. They've left it. That because I feel, because, you know, it's common to man. Men have tapped into some deep things that in the next day Jesus comes, they know it. And that is what they are trading with. How can you explain it? Jesus lived for three and a half, 33 and a half years. Check it. There was never a point in his life where it was recorded that Jesus broke down. Go and check it. So why are we, why are we, why are we breaking down as people of God? Why are we stranded? When the man that brought the principle of prayer knows the source. That's why one of the principles that worked in the life of Jesus is that's why this, this man, yes, I'm correct, he's still a man and he's still a God. That's why he walked in that realm of strange strength. Jesus doing back to back, back to back crusade, back to back meetings that some of his friends were worried that what is, is he mad? In fact, they said that, is he crazy? Some of his friends, that he hasn't eaten. That he hasn't, he, he had no leisure for himself. He said, don't worry. He said, this is my time. I need to finish up what God has given me. I need to finish up. Now look at that. Can we, can we measure that for 33 and a half years? A man sustained his success. He sustained his progress. There was nothing bad that was recorded about Jesus. 
And that's the man, that's the, the, the one we are following. That's the man that laid down the principle. So I'm challenging us this morning. If you are struggling with something, you are struggling with something. God has made provision. You can leave this realm. Yeah. I'm struggling too. To touch the realm. The realm of prayer where all things are possible. Please stop making excuses. Let's stop making excuses. Many people are living outside of our world. Now, a continuous progress is a function of asking for help and asking for a lot of it every day till Jesus comes. Our Father has laid our foundation. Since I knew him, he has always been praying about help. He has always been. In fact, the foundation of Tabernacle of Power was built on that help. On the foundation, one of the foundational units of Tabernacle of Power is help. So to make continuous progress, one of the things you must do, in fact, God expects it, except you are proud, except you don't need God. But if you are like someone like if you are someone like me that is very, very weak. In fact, before coming, my, my heart, I was telling Pastor, my priest, pray, pray for me. Because my heart was pounding. In spite of the revelations we might have gotten, I was telling my wife, I don't know how to put this two together. I have been working on it. I slept. I was saying, God, he said, ah. I said, I have it, but I just, I have not put it together. But I still have to trust God. So, ask God for a lot of help. It's not... And many of us, we are still at a stage that you pray very well today and miss prayer tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> you don't know the function of prayer. You don't know how spiritual realm of prayer. If some of us knew. Now, the reason why the Abali seems to be more powerful than us is because these guys, their eyes are open. Your eyes may not be open, but there is a way God communicates to you. There is a way God communicates spiritual realm to spiritual reality to us. If some of us knew how spiritual realm operates, I'm telling you, and believers, we, are, we joke with spiritual realm. If you know how it operates, I'm telling you, every day when you wake up, God, please help me. You will ask for a lot of it. A lot of it. And the kind of help that you ask is dependent on the kind of destiny you carry. I don't know about you. I don't know the level of help, the level at which you are asking for that help. But if you are someone like me, someone like our daddy, our parents in the house, that God is committing global vision into our hands, you need a, we need to cry for help every day. So it's not something that you just it's part, it must be part of your prayer for you to experience a continuous progress it more every day if you want to forget you can ask your wife for some of us that are married that please every day you can set alarm help prayer <laughs> I make it part of my daily routine because I discover that I'm becoming weaker and weaker and I, God, I just need help I need help to, to you know, just put so many things together at one you know, I'm just thinking, 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 thinking and all that. So if you are in that category of people that you know you need help, that this destiny, this thing called destiny, that you can't do it by yourself, then on a daily basis, you must ask help. Ask for help. And there is something that is missing in this generation. Please permit me. I'm still part of it. There is something that is missing. If you check it, we have David say he's pray, he pray for me like seven times in a day. We have people like Daniel that say he pray for three times in a day. Please, can you ask, can we ask ourselves, how many times do we pray? 24 hours. How many hours? That shows how much of God's help you need. In fact, let me simplify it. 
the number of hours you pray is dependent, shows your need, your desperation for God's help. And I've said it, it's still later part of my message. I, I pray, I preach it later. Men that survive in this world, in this earth that we are in, they ask for help. Let me still repeat it. They tap into something that is not feasible or not. And one of the reasons why the reason why they do so is because they knew that once they get it, that's all. That's why many people invest a lot of time in praying. Because they knew that this, they knew how spiritual realm operate that once you enter into it, you can actually carve a niche for yourself in that realm. And no wonder Peter said, he said, we've seen, we've seen Elijah, we've seen uh, Moses, Jesus, can we build a, a tabernacle for ourselves here? We don't want to go. It's because they enter a realm that was totally strange from the normal realm. So Peter said, oh God, we don't want to live here. Can we stay here permanently? So men like that, it took an investment. Prayer is an investment. And let me also this, say this. That anybody you see in our world doing one thing, great, one achievement, they are being helped by the spirits. There is a sp sp supernatural influences on whatever they are doing. Now for us as believers, the spirit, we know the positive spirit that is helping us is the Holy Ghost. So when you see men doing something, in fact, if it is not positive, if it is negative, there comes a time when someone that is watching pornography, watching erotic movies, the spirit, demons will come around and help you. That is why it is difficult for so many people to break certain additions because they are being helped by strange spirits. So it's a dimensions. Those are realms. Those are, it may be negative realms, it may be demonic, demonic realm. Those are realms. So what men does is that they invest a lot in prayer. That once I enter spiritual realm, I know that spirit influences can come to my head. And it's not just Holy Ghost. Angels the host of heaven can come to my head. Are we getting me? Then also, number four, making a continuous progress is a function of time and distance. Time and season are very, very important in making a continuous progress. I think before the, the before yesterday workers meeting, the last workers meeting we had before yesterday, when daddy was talking about something and I was praying, immediately he entered that message. I was saying, God, this is the only message I wanted to preach. And daddy has started off on it. Please don't allow him to finish my message and all that. But one of the things that I remember he mentioned that I remember is that many of us, if you are around, he mentioned about time and season. That when you discern time, that you will be successful there will be a progress when he was talking about building new sanctuary for tabernacle of power. It's very, very important because in continuous progress, in progress, we have time and we have distance. So there is nobody that progresses without paying homage to time and distance. And he, the reason why Jesus said it or Paul, he said pray without season. How many of us know the reason why he said that? So that you won't miss your season. So one of the reasons why we pray to make continuous progress is so that you and I don't miss our season. I've said it. Many people that understood spirit realm Spiritual realm is not like our world. And it's where God is calling everybody into. In fact, God is 
is every believer now. Every born again believer, whether you like it or not, you must be an intercessor. In this season, by force, I have been forced into it, even when I didn't know it, that I was called as an intercessor. So it goes beyond the pastor, the lead pastor over the house of God. Every believer. In fact, the more you don't pray, the more you see battles. Nowadays, as a believer, if you are not an intercessor, I'm just saying it, I'm employing us. Kindly register yourself. I'm not talking for you to pray so that you can receive, so that marriage can happen this year. That's not what I'm talking about. Kindly go and register yourself. Fill a form that every day I will be praying. Because if you are not praying, the calamity coming over our world is so strange that even Christians will be drowned. Many of us don't know the capacity, the level of what is coming on earth. So God is, is actually calling everybody. And it's not just because I'm preaching it. Many of us, we have seen it in visions. God is telling you every day. So you just hear something, you know that God is saying, go and pray. I'm begging you, don't joke with it. God is calling every one of us into that realm. Because seasons are changing at a fingertip. How do I know seasons are changing? Apart from the spiritual realm, you can check the upgrades of your apps. Almost like a few seconds now. Apps are being updated. That can tell you how the, the rate at which things are changing in our spiritual realm. So in order for us not to miss our boss, not to miss our season as believers, we need to pray always. Destiny can be compromised when prayer is not consistent. And I've said it before. Let me say it. If you are still a believer in this generation and you are still skipping time of your prayer, you pray fervently today, you miss tomorrow. You are one of the people I'm talking to. You will be amazed the kind of trouble that you will encounter. So let's cuckoo, jejeli, submit. We have 24 hours in a day. So out of the hours, many of us will spend so much time on, online. How many out of those hours, how many have you registered? Do you know, that's a, that's a level. When you say, okay, I'll be praying like 10 a.m. Then also, I'm not, I'm, uh, every day I'm, I'm praying for two hours. Let's assume like that, that you decided to pray for two hours. Do you know that's a level that you decided that you've been praying for two hours? That's your own, that's your own schedule. But there is a level of no schedule. And it's very, very painful. That realm is very, very painful. Because no schedule means the heavens can just call you. Go and pray now. And that's when you want to watch Bob Fitz. Bob at Abishola. The last episode. And you just had some, the impression just come to you. Go and pray now. So, the, the, the level at which God is taking every one of us to is beyond you yourself having a schedule, having a time to pray. They can call you anytime to pray. Anytime. And you must be ready. And when you fail to do so, it's a sin on your part. Because the Bible says, he that knows how to do good and does not do it, is a sin. Praise God. Now, let me move forward. Like our father used to say. Now, one of the most profound prophets in the scripture in the Old Testament is Prophet Moses. And he was the very first person to mention that verse of scripture in the Old Testament. He said that men, that, uh, men shall not live by bread alone. Before Jesus picked it up, when he was defending his case, with Satan in the scripture. 
Now, there is also another one that I mentioned earlier on. Jesus said that in Luke 18 verse 1, that men ought always to pray. Why do you believe that those scriptures were actually infused in the scripture? He said the first one, man shall not live by bread alone. Two, men ought always to pray. Now, if the scripture, men of God, they lay emphasis on what men ought to do, then we need to pay attention. If they say men shall not live by bread alone, then Jesus concluded it. Moses didn't conclude it. But by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. Then he also said men ought always to pray and not to faint. Why do you think they mentioned that? Because let me say this. The very wiring of man is based on these two things. The survival of man is based on these two things. The other or some base. But our very wiring is based on the word of God and prayer. And no man can survive without it. No man. Thirdly, this earthly realm that we are in only responds to men of prayer. Check it. In heaven, they don't pray. The only person that pray is Jesus and the Holy Spirit to third of the Godhead. Those are the two people that pray in heaven. The Spirit don't pray. But as long as you found yourself in this realm, sir, ma, you must pray. Because that's the only thing that's the only thing that makes men survive. That's the only thing that makes men relevant. You must ask yourself, why is it that we are between the second heaven? We have the third heaven where God stays. We have the second heaven, then come down to earth. And the Bible says, many of us, we are good students of the Bible. It was recorded that second heaven is where Satan and his hosts are. So why do you think you don't need prayer to assess the third heaven? So as long as you are a man here, you are called man, you have flesh and blood. The only thing this realm understands is prayer. Let me say it like that. Let me be partial and say it like that. Then I want us to pick notes. Prayer is the only channel through which the will of the Lord can be done on the heart. Prayer can be used as a weapon to enforce what is yours on the heart. No other thing. Prayer can be used to enforce your will, the will of God in the third evil here on earth. It can also serve as a weapon to weed off anything that wants to stop our blessing. Praise God. I hope we are getting blessed. I want us to follow this. Prayer must be a food for every man on the heart. If you want to make serious progress. In fact, if you want to make sense at all. Now, I've said it, let me say it. I'm not disputing it. Thank God for the gift of cars. Thank God for good houses. But do you know one thing? Read destiny is beyond that. So, when we are talking of read destiny, what will make it happen is serious prayer. And I want, to, I want us to pray to the level that there will be spirit influences on our prayer. Now, the spirit influences I mean is when you are praying your prayer, you pray for five minutes and you think you've prayed for three hours. There is no spirit influence on your prayer. Are we getting it? That you pray for five minutes 
and you just pray for five minutes and it's very very difficult you thought ah I have prayed for three hours and you check your time it's only five minutes but anytime you pray how would I put it anytime you pray for long for long and it looks like five minutes then there is a spirit influence in that prayer so you may still be struggling with prayer that ah I want to break through I want to break through one of the secrets of prayer is stay there until a spirit influence comes to help you the second one to make progress and stand in this realm your prayer altar must be on fire our father has taught much on that Continuous progress is known with men that can pray. I've said this one before. In prayer, we exercise our authority over the earthly realm. Alright. We need to con con continue. I didn't give scriptures. I believe we all know the scriptures. Actually, the main scriptures is Luke 18 verse 1 where it says men ought always to pray and not to faint. And the other one, the media can help us project it, that men shall live by bread by men shall not live by bread alone by every word that cometh upon every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God now let me say this as I'm rounding up the number of hours we spend in prayers now I don't want you to be deceived that they say hours doesn't matter in destiny in prayer it matters it depends on the kind of destiny you are carrying. Do you know something? There are many of us that you will be forced to spend more hours in prayer, even when you don't realize it. And you'll be wondering, why is it that others are having their breakthroughs? One hour, two hours. And your own. In fact, the six hours, five hours you are spending in prayer, God has not answered your prayer. Because we have many people. I want us to have that dimension. I want us to know that dimension because we have some people that they have been called, their only call is to pray for nations. So the fact that someone is praying for four, five hours, six hours, and nothing seems to be happening around them, please don't make a joke of them. We have people that they've been, they've been commissioned, they've been ordained to pray for nations, to pray for territories. So, the level of your prayer, especially when there, there are spirit influences on your prayer, on your prayer life, is dependent upon the kind of capacity, uh, destiny capacity God has built around your life. For instance, it took me time before I realized when, because I always want to pray in the night, and I cherish it, I love it. It's, it's as if it's a crime. Anytime Rev mention it, Many of us we know. He will mention it. I pray. Twelve. My eyes are pop open. Honestly, I used to wonder God. Anytime he says that, is that for we that sleep? <laughs> it took me time. And I need to pray and say, Father, please. One of the reasons why is like that. Let me say with due respect, sir. Is because of the calling upon his life. If dad is not praying like that, this territory is gone. So, even when some of us, we don't understand the reason why we are praying for long, the supernatural realm, they knew that when you reduce your prayer time, in fact, that can come up and tell us that it has never been convenient. Now, let me shock you. I pray, if I pray for, anytime I pray for, I will struggle, struggle. Once it's 11, I won't feel sleepy. And I pray from 12 to 1, I'll go and sleep. That one hour I spent, I come back in the office, now trouble. It will be a struggle. But God is helping us now. Praise God. God is helping us. But this is what I'm saying. We have people that if they don't pray, 
In fact, one of the reasons why there is so much is as if there's so much troubles in some of us, some of us, some of us lives, is because God wants us to pray. The battles in your life, in my life, is nothing. God sees them as a call to prayer. You see them as a battle, but God says they are called to prayer. We have many of us, if we go to sleep, nations will cry. And God is counting on us. That's what I'm saying that is beyond just asking. Many of us, we have gone into trouble because you don't pray. Daddy said, Mama pray for five to six, and I've known that with her, five to six every day. Why do you think God will allow her to rest? Why do you think God will allow her to rest from praying five to six every day? Once you start it like that, spirit influence will come and give you the energy it takes. Because they know that once your prayer stops, darkness is gaining momentum. Darkness is gaining ground on hearts. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name.
And Enoch walked with God and he was not. God took him. God counted it as an embarrassment for death to take him. God looked at it. It's an embarrassment for this man that we talk, we commune. He was saying that real prayer goes beyond asking. Day before yesterday, something happened. There was a challenge on ground. There was someone that has a challenge on ground. And so, and I just came from a journey. So, I just tried to attend to the case officially. And then as I went, I kneeled down that, Father, thank you for this journey. Thank you for keeping us. Because I knew what I saw before we embarked on the journey. I knew what I saw. So, I was just I was just in the spirit praying and whatever that um, <laughs> whatever I was I was deliberately thanking God that thank you because you know sometimes when you travel you go you come and nothing happened you feel that <laughs> nothing should have happened <laughs> my friend there are things that should have happened but the mercy of God just took things so I was thanking as I knelt down to thank God father thank you. And the Lord said to me, this was the problem. This was what happened. This was what happened. This was what happened. But I kept quiet because it's not something to say. So I just kept quiet. You see, what I'm saying is, you see, real prayer goes beyond have you prayed to an extent that you want to leave that prayer section and the Holy Spirit is calling you back that there is still more to discuss. Have you entered your prayer closet to want to pray about something and the Holy Spirit tells you, put this one aside. There is a matter. There's another matter. I don't know. And let me round it up. Let me round it up by saying this. Because if you want to enter that one again, you have steered the water. Now, listen. The best way to pray is to keep praying. That is the best way. That is the best way. Is to keep praying. It, when you feel tired, that's the best time to keep praying. How does effective prayer be, begins? Start from you having a schedule. And be religious about that schedule. And from that schedule, the Holy Spirit will take you to his own schedule. That's how it happens. You have a schedule. Now, when I started praying, listen. <laughs> when I started learning how to pray, because we need to make it I will just tell myself, I want to pray for one hour. I remember it was one hour we started then. It was one hour we started. And uh, you want to pray for one hour, like he said, you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, particularly when you are praying in tongues. You have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and you just feel like, ah, ah, this must have been about two hours. You open your eyes, you see, you have just spent seven. But you know what I discover? When I started running the schedule of one hour, I would step into my prayer time and start praying. And I would pray and feel like I have spent one hour. By the time I open my eyes, I have not even spent five minutes. You know what I do? I just sit down there. I just sit down there that I am not leaving this place. You know what I discover? After some time, the Holy Spirit will just take over. And in between, I start praying. Sometimes I see it again. In between I start. In fact, sometimes I sleep. Now listen to me. A sleep in your prayer schedule is part of the prayer. Just don't leave that place. Don't, don't leave that place. Sometimes from that sleep, you get some revelations. You see, God, God is more concerned about your heart. That art of prayer that I am here. I'm not moving. I'm here. 
And you see, as you go on in that practice, you now begin to discover there's this unusual strength. There's this unusual enablement. There's this ability that now you now pray for three hours you felt you have not started at all. I'm telling you under God, I lie not. I, I, I can't remember when last I, I, when last I prayed lesser than three hours in a day. How? How? Why? Because I move with prayer. In the toilet I'm praying. I don't know the difference between when I'm sleeping and when I'm praying. I pray to sleep and sleep to pray. He goes with you. He moves with you. It's your life. It has become a, it has become a breath. And it's not mechanical. It, it's just there. You are permanently on the Holy Ghost schedule of prayers. It's just your life now. It's your life now. But I'm particularly if you now know how to switch in tongues, la brando se katayada. And you are blasting like that. And you are blasting in your heart like that. And guess what? Don't copy anybody. Who Don't copy. For example, you can live with me for 15 years and never hear me pray. You, you can. These are my two sons. They were on the same bed with me. They were on the same bed with me. I was watching them sleep. <laughs> they were just sleeping. I was. all through the night, just blasting, lost. And then you won't hear the voice. But the voice is louder in heaven. Please. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. As God bless you today. Yes, sir. Let's experiment this in two minutes. Just let's experiment. Close your eyes. Praise God. Can you blast in tongue in the next two minutes? Just blast in tongues in the next two minutes. And let's see if the Holy Ghost can take you five, five hours. You are still blasting in tongues while the service is going on. Just blast in tongues. <laughs>